I want to start off this video by saying God is good. And every once in a while, I tell you guys that Satan does not want me to make a video that day. And today is one of those days. He does not want me to make a video today. There were a lot of obstacles to getting down here today. And uh, he's fighting me on it. That means we're making a video right now. So my name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River Channel. And the Lord has given us another good day. And we will rejoice and be glad in it as we await this pre-tribulation rapture of the church, which I believe could happen at any time. Um, I'm trying to let the Lord lead this video more than ever. And I always, always ask for his guidance. But I'm doing it real time. I'm asking for his guidance in making this video. Um, I don't have time for snack suggestions. Somebody in the comments yesterday said, Tom, scrambled eggs on toast with coffee. And I thought that sounds pretty good if we had the time for it, but we don't. Um, I want to go to Psalm 91. Okay. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him. I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God is good. God is so good. So, lead me, Lord. There's a term called the October Surprise. And many times during a presidential election cycle they will use that term what's going to be the october surprise that could perhaps change a person's vote from one candidate to the next to the other what's the october surprise and i'm looking at this october going i've never seen i mean there could be 10 surprises <laughs> just the stuff going on in this world is incredible i look at the war in the middle east and the rumors of it really exploding. Could that be the October surprise? Could God stepping into this to end it be the October surprise? Could the rapture of the church be the October? Talk about an October surprise. That would be a huge surprise because that will cause shock and awe throughout the entire world. Could be. Could be. I'm just looking at a world with rumors of war that I have never seen in my entire life. I am looking at a world with disastrous weather like I've never seen in my life. I am looking at a world where the global elite has things prepared for this world and they're ready to go that are shocking unless you understand what the seven-year tribulation is about. And I'm looking at 
that seven-year tribulation going, man, it's ready to begin. And we, the church, have to be removed before that begins. We're waiting for that rapture. I think it could happen any day. But it will happen in Jesus' perfect timing. But I don't see what's going on in the world being sustainable for another couple of years. I just don't see it before the rapture. I don't see it. I, I just, I'm looking now and I'm going, we're sitting here. What day is it today? October 3rd, I think. And the Middle East is on the verge of a total explosion. And I don't think that happens. I th All right, let me say it a different way. I think the Psalm 83 war or God stepping into all those countries, that inner ring of enemies, I think we're in the phases of that right now. And I really do believe God could step in at any time, but I think that happens after the rapture. I don't know. I just, uh, you know what? <laughs> I just think at this time, we have to have our eyes on Jesus at all times. That's what I think. I think we're in a time period where putting your trust in anything other than Jesus is a really bad idea. You know, many people are just really addicted to this election. And I think it's, um, I just, I, I, I think we're past the point where an election or any candidate can save us. I think Jesus saves us. Um, it doesn't mean that if we're here for an election, I'm not saying I wouldn't vote. Um, I would vote if we are here for an election, but we're living in really weird times in the United States right now. We're living in very strange times. We have this port strike, which is already causing a little bit of panic buying because the ports all the way down, all the way up and down the East Coast through Texas, around to Texas, they're all striking. They're saying it's gonna cause shortages and I guess people are starting to panic buy and we've got this disastrous, disastrous hurricane that happened last week. They're saying this hurricane season looks like it's going to get worse and worse. I'm just sitting there going, man, Lord, we're waiting for you. And I think we're getting very close. I, You know, you guys know, I think it's the next event on the prophetic calendar, the rapture of the church. And I think we're getting very, very close to it. I'm going to shotgun some new stuff going on. A lot of the news is just watching and waiting for what's going to go on next in the Middle East. That's what a lot of the news is. This is from Beginning of Sorrows News on Telegram. A Syria report. Large-scale airstrikes in Jabla near Russia's Kamamim Air Base in western Syria on the coast. Large fires broke out in Jabla near the Russian Kamamim Air Base following a major attack and firefighting teams were headed to the scene. This was in the middle of the night, Middle East time. The Russian army participated with the Syrian army with interceptions. The Syrian observatory said Israeli targeting of weapons depot in Jabla countryside on the Syrian coast. I can't believe how much Syria is getting involved in this, man. Isaiah 17, 1 looks like it's getting closer and closer, doesn't it? Where Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. It's no longer a city. There's a lot of people there. We're in the very last days. Amir Sarfati said, The Israeli strike on the Kamamim base in Latakia last night. Israeli Israel has never targeted anything adjacent to the Russians in Syria before. This is new territory. Now, from what I hear, they didn't hit that Russian base, but it was close to there. That's what I've heard since then. 
Syria is reporting of a hit on a weapons depot. It's a lot of Syria talk. Next, we got Bubba News shared this on Telegram. Will Israel hit Iran's nuclear sites in the days to come? That's the million dollar question. We know it's coming, but the question is when. If Israel strikes in the next few days, while the Iranian hypersonic missile attack is still fresh in the mind, this would ease the anti-Semitic diplomatic blowback from world leaders compared to if Israel did this down the road. I totally agree. Israel destroyed the Iraqi nuclear facilities in 1981 over U.S. objections. In retrospect, the U.S. was grateful. Israel destroyed the Syrian nuclear facilities in 2007 over U.S. objections. In, ret in retrospect, the U.S. was grateful. In 2024, the U.S. is objecting to Israel destroying Iranians' nuclear facilities. I'm seeing a pattern here. You know what they say about history? It repeats. But Israel could take care of all of Iran's oil storage terminals and crude oil export facilities on the Persian Gulf first. We'll see where it leads. You know, one side of me says Israel is kind of saying we're not going to attack their nuclear stuff, but will they? Like we're not, we're not, there's rumors out there saying they're not going to go after Iran's nuclear facilities till after the U.S. election. But you know the way Israel is. We could hear about it and all of a sudden they're going after it now. They can't totally destroy Iran because Iran is here for the Ezekiel 38 war. I think that's a ways into the tribulation. And Iran is there. So they don't totally destroy them. But we're going to see. And it's and for all the stuff I'm talking, it's all in the very near future. This stuff is unfolding hour by hour. You know, I go home after recording a video and I open up Telegram and it's like, oh, I could have included these 40 things. <laughs> Just news is happening. When we get in an hour, we're getting what we used to get in a year in regards to Middle East stuff. Israel's mission to the UN said the Iranians know our capabilities to reach any destination in the Middle East. The Israeli response will occur soon and it will be very strong and painful. There you go. Amir Sarfati on Telegram said IDF special forces from the 98th and 36th divisions are fighting significant heroic battles in southern Lebanon during which more than 50 terrorists were killed in several battles in the last few hours. He posted this middle of the night, midnight-ish, Israel, Israel time last night. Drones and fighter jets assist them from the air. About an hour later, he said, Bat Yam, I'm probably saying that young, wrong, Bat Yam, a suburb of Tel Aviv targeted in pair of overnight drone attacks during Rosh Hashanah. No injuries reported. He also talked about the ground maneuver in southern Lebanon. About 60 terrorists were eliminated in the past day by our forces maneuvering in the area, and about 200 terrorist targets were attacked from the air. So they're, the fighting is strong in southern Lebanon, trying to get Hezbollah up above the Latani River. Also, another strike this morning. On the Dahi in Beirut. Yesterday, more than 240 rockets launched from Lebanon into northern Israel. 240 yesterday. That's like the minor news, you know. Israeli officials say they may conduct strikes in Iran, Syria, and Yemen in response to Iran's missile attack. Well, they're their proxies of Iran. So it's like striking Iran. Jerusalem Jane said early this morning, 200 rockets have been fired from Lebanon at northern Israel this morning. It's the Jewish New Year and people are sitting in bomb shelters. Yeah, today is their New Year, Rosh Hashanah. This won't surprise you. Insider paper, President Biden's administration has urged Israel to avoid direct attacks on Iran's nuclear facilities when it strikes back against Tehran. 
Israel tells Lebanese to evacuate villages in the south. Again, they have done it again. The Israeli military on Thursday, today, told residents in more than 20 villages and a city in southern Lebanon to evacuate. The latest in a series of calls to relocate issued by the army as it targets Hezbollah positions. The IDF, this is a quote, the IDF does not intend to harm you. And for your own safety, you must evacuate your homes immediately and head north of the Awali River. Save your lives, said Army spokesman on X. Hezbollah says it fired rockets on Israel's Tiberias. This is from Insider Paper. They said they did it today, on Thursday. The Iran-backed group fired a salvo of rockets at the city of Tiberias in response to the Israeli bombardment of Lebanese towns, villages, and civilians, is what their quote was. Israel has notified uh, the UN also that their response to Iran will be very strong and painful. This is from Israel Today. Growing concern that the response to Iran's missile barrage is going to be relatively weak due to direct influence by the Biden administration. Same goes for the IDF ground operation in southern Lebanon. Biden and Harris are desperate to avoid a major escalation just one month before the U.S. election, and defeating Hezbollah and Iran requires an escalation. I don't, I, I don't see, I don't see them not doing it because of the Biden administration at this point, because Biden didn't want them to eliminate the Hezbollah leaders, and they did it. Biden didn't want them to go into different areas. Han Yunus, you remember that? Didn't want that. Didn't want them in the Philadelphia corridor on the Egyptian border, and they did it anyway. So, listen to this one. This is from Israel Today, also. The Iranian news agency, IRNA, reports that Supreme Leader Khomeini will personally lead the Central Friday prayer in Tehran tomorrow, marking the anniversary of the outbreak of the al Flood War on October 7th and commemorating the death of Hezbollah leader Ranpuba Hassan Nasrallah. Now that's a risky proposition. Khomeini is known to be paranoid, and given Israel's intent to, intent to respond to the recent missile attack, it will certainly be interesting to see these security arrangements around him tomorrow. Less than 48 hours have passed since Iran's ballistic missile attack in Israel. So the response is coming. So just interesting. He's going to lead the prayer. And I think it's also Hassan Nasrallah's funeral tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. And he says he's going to lead the prayer there. That could be, you know, would it surprise you if there was a kaboom there? I don't know. Nothing really surprises me anymore. Honestly, you know, nothing. This stuff, you know, I'm very somber today, but it's not that I'm nervous or afraid because you know what? I belong to Jesus and he loves us and we trust in him in these days and he's coming back very soon because this stuff is not sustainable. Earth is bracing for an extreme geomagnetic storm this week after the sun blasted a massive solar flare toward our planet. Okay, get in line. <laughs> okay, you're, you're get in line. There's a lot of stuff coming to Earth. <laughs> I'm really hoping Jesus is coming to meet us in the air. That's what I'm hoping. But yeah, they got this geomagnetic storm. They're saying it could be a bad one. They've said that in the past. But uh, we'll see. All right. The government does not have the funds if another hurricane hits. Wonderful. We can send billions of dollars to hundreds of countries every day. But when it comes to helping our people, I'm oh, sorry, we're out of money. The Secretary of Homeland Security says a major concern is funding if another hurricane hits. Well, you didn't do good with this last one. I've heard they've offered people that have lost everything $750. Great. But we'll send billions and billions to any country that needs our help. We'll fight for their borders. Don't care about ours. Don't care about our people. 
We are meeting the immediate needs with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. We do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. Mayorkas says. He says it's not a political issue and that there must be funding to deal with future events. These extreme weather events are increasing. Listen to this. I thought the wording was very interesting that he said. These extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and severity. Interesting wording. Almost like birth pains. Drone video shows Chimney Rock destroyed by massive flood. Hurricane Helene wreaked havoc in Chimney Rock, North Carolina from September 25th to 27th, dumping approximately 360 millimeters or 14 inches of rain and causing severe flooding. During this period, the Broad River overflowed, destroying the community of around 125 people. A post-apocalyptic scene, North Carolina communities are wiped off the map by Helene, the governor says. It says hundreds of roads were destroyed and the entire communities were wiped off the map because of the storm last week and over the weekend. I have gotten many emails from people in that part of the country, and it is beyond worse than you could ever dream of. People need help. And they're not getting too much help from the government. And the government is telling people now, don't help each other. Just donate money to us and we'll help them. Uh, we don't trust you. Honestly, we don't. You don't have a good track record. Earthquakes the last 24 hours. 38 over 4.0. 8 over 5.0. Is it just a coincidence that the comet of the century is flying through the sky as the biggest Middle East war suddenly explodes? All of a sudden, everything has changed. Israeli troops have entered southern Lebanon... Iran has fired hundreds of missiles into the land of Israel, and it appears that an all-out war has arrived. This war doesn't seem to have a commonly accepted name yet, and so I'm just going to start calling it the, big, the biggest Middle East war until somebody out there comes up with some, something better. Is it just a coincidence that this war has suddenly exploded as the comet of the century is flying past our planet? There's a lot of stuff going on that says we're near the end meaning the rapture of the church and the beginning of the seven-year tribulation, which, oh my goodness, we do not want to be here for that. Let's go to clown world. Okay, let's do it. Okay? <laughs> this is just, so get ready for this one. Power thirsty artificial intelligence turns to mothballed nuclear plants. Is that safe? <laughs> you just won't believe what they're doing. As Microsoft strikes a deal to restart a reactor at Three Mile Island to power AI, nuclear specialists weigh in on the unprecedented process. Microsoft announced on September 20th that it had struck a 20-year deal to purchase energy from a dormant nuclear power plant that will be brought back online. And not just any plant, the Three Mile Island, the facility in Londonbury Township, Pennsylvania, that was the site of the worst ever nuclear accident on U.S. soil when a partial meltdown of one of its reactors occurred in 1979. The move, which symbolizes technology giants' need to power their growing artificial intelligence efforts, raises questions over how shuttered nuclear plants can be restarted safely. Not least because Three Mile Island isn't the only plant being brought out of retirement. Also, the Palisades Nuclear Plant an 805 megawatt facility in Cover, Michigan, which shut down in May 22. And that plant is on track to reopen in late 2025. Let's see. Revving up old nuclear power plants to power AI. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's clown world. It's clown world. We're in the last days. <laughs> you got to laugh a little bit. You have to. God gave us a sense of humor because he knew we'd see Clown World before he came to get us. All right, let's do a few comments of the day, okay? Stephanie, forgiveness is amazing. Oh, I agree. 
My entire family betrayed me and God taught me how to forgive them. It's so freeing. You're so right, sister. You are so right. Yeah. You want to be bound up? You live your life in unforgiveness and you will be bound up with anger and grief. But when you when you let God show you how to forgive someone who's done terrible things against you, Stephanie used the perfect word, freeing is freeing. <laughs> time to time for me to fly. The other day I was driving to work and I asked God to help me forgive people. Later on, I had a client. We were talking about God and family problems. And he said, it's all about forgiving and forgetting. I was amazed. God listens to our prayers. It's great. So on the work, you're praying to God about forgiveness. And then you hear that. Praise God. MGX. I just want to go home. Jesus is where my true home is. I miss so many that passed before me. It's got to be time to go home soon. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Yeah, I think most of us are ready. You know, but we got work to do. Until he takes us, we have work to do. We have to spread that gospel. Another one, Scott. Homesick for heaven. Come Lord Jesus. We're with you, Scott. We understand. Let's do one more. I love this comment. Jesus is king. If a father purchases a car to give to his daughter on her birthday, he does not expect anything in return. Even if she offered to pay it back, the father would reject it and say, no, my child, I paid it in full. Go drive. Heavenly Father sent his son to purchase salvation for all mankind. We receive salvation as a gift from him. And if we try to offer him something in return, he would say, no, my child, I paid it in full. Go rest. You are so spot on with that, sister. Thank you. So spot on. There's nothing we can do to add to salvation. Nothing. And thinking you can add anything to your salvation is, it's sin. Because I really, I always say this, I really believe it. I really believe that if it was within our power to add like, 30% of our salvation. Like, Jesus, I did 30%. And, and you do the other 70%. I think Jesus would flip that and go, no, no, no. If you can do 30%, you can do 100%. I'm not going to the cross. Now, I'm putting words in Jesus' mouth, and I don't like to do that. But I know one thing. Jesus paid it all. He paid the entire price for our salvation with his precious blood. And I think it's horrible when people say, well, you have to do this, 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 and this, this to go to heaven. Because that's a, that payment of blood from Jesus, it's great, but it wasn't enough. You better make sure you're baptized. You better make sure you're only reading the King James Version. You better make sure. You know what? Jesus paid it all. All. He came here 2,000 years ago. And he came here to fix the sin problem. And he knew when he came here that he had come here to die. He knew that he had come here to shed his own blood to rescue mankind. It's exactly what he did. Without the shedding of blood, Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Blood has to be shed. In the Old Testament, they took a lamb, they sprinkled the blood in the Holy of Holies, and their sins were covered for a year. Then Jesus comes along. Whole different game. That blood is serious. That is God blood. And that's the once and for all payment for sin. You can't compare God blood to animal blood. And Jesus will never shed another drop of blood. It is done. It is finished. So for his last words on the cross. It is finished. He had just paid the sin debt in full with his blood. So when you say to Jesus, I'm a sinner, I know I'm a sinner and I need payment for these sins and I have faith in your blood that it will give me a clean slate. It'll wash me white as snow. That's exactly what happens. You say, Jesus, I believe you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe you are 
God's only begotten son. I believe you came here. I believe in your death, your burial, your resurrection. I need a savior. Jesus, you're the savior of the world. I'm turning from unbelief to belief. That's repentance, 180 degree turn. I belong to you, Jesus. When you do that, you're saved. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You will be rapture ready. You will be born again. New life. Jesus wants to give you new life. Jesus wants to give you eternal life. He wants to spend all of eternity with you. Can you imagine being in the immediate family of God with a lot of brothers and sisters who love you unconditionally? There's no backstabbing in heaven. There's no abuse, emotional, physical. There's no abuse in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. Jesus wants to spend eternity with you. And he paid your way. But yet, more people will hear this message and say, no, I don't want that. Then we'll say, oh my goodness, I want that, Jesus. Thank you. More people will say, I just don't believe it. Or the saddest ones are the ones who are like, no, the things I did are too bad. It's like God sent his only begotten son who got nailed to a bloody cross. And what you did is too bad. Like you won't accept Jesus' forgiveness because you think what you did is too bad. That's an insult, honestly, to the price that was paid for your sin. It's an insult. Jesus covered that blood has the power to wash white as snow every person who's ever lived. That blood has the power to forgive every single sin that has ever been committed. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to say to Jesus, I believe in your atoning blood and I believe in your finished work and I want new life and I know you make all things new, Jesus. I want that. Talk to him. And I'll do my challenge as I always do. If you don't believe in him, if you think everything I'm saying is crazy, but if you're brave enough to take a challenge, that's hard to do if you believe this is all fairy tale. I'm going to challenge you to grab a Bible, open up to the book of John, go to a quiet place and say, Jesus, I don't even know who I'm talking to, but if you're real, reveal yourself to me and start reading the book of John and see what happens. Give it some time. That's all you have to say to Jesus. I don't believe in you. If you are real, reveal yourself to me. You know what? Maybe it's a waste of time. Maybe nothing will happen. Maybe nothing at all will happen. And you could say, Tom, you're nuts. But you know what? Maybe everything will happen. Maybe today would be the day that would be so new for you. Newness of life. Maybe you turn to Jesus. Maybe you could avoid this seven-year tribulation that's coming up. Because I guarantee you, if you're left behind, you'll remember these words. I guarantee it. Turn to Jesus today. Trust in his finished work and his atoning blood, okay? I'm going to shut the camera off, and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and man, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you.